now we can start with the series compensation devices the main principle is to shorten the line for example here we added something it's uh, we can in we can inject a voltage or introduce a capacitor that shorten the lines so two way increase a series capacitor there or inject a voltage source there so how it work let's see the figure in the right one here the blue one this uh, this is the E2. We consider the E2 as a reference. And here E1 is uh, sending in voltage with the transmission angle delta. If we don't have this uh, compensation devices, then it will be the blue one. So here we have this blue one. You can see the blue one. This is the transmission line drop. And this is the uh, E1. So what we see that here the voltage difference the transmission line voltage difference is this which is much higher now and the current we see that this is the current blue one is i this uh, this i which is uh, bl over j of x1 so here bl is actually this one since we have this larger voltage difference, we have this higher current. So this is the current here, which uh, without shun, without series compensation. So we have the much higher current. If we have the higher current, then losses in the transmission line is also much higher. So now the plan is to use a series injection. If we introduce a series injection, then what will happen? If we use the capacitor here, let's say use the capacitor. We use the capacitor here and we have the X. This is, let's say this is line and this is XC. And the total reactance here, which is B actually XL minus XC now. So the drop across the transmission line now reduced because the XC is the, comes as a minus. So before, we have the drop is this one across the transmission line. Since now introduce a capacitor, that's introduce the injection voltage, this BC plus BC. So we have, this is our new voltage. So this is the now new voltage across this, the transmission line. So the current related to that. So we got, this is the current and we see this this current is a smaller, this amount of a smaller current. So you got this red current here, this one red color. So we see that for the same amount of power, we need to send the less current, the magnitude of the current reduce a lot. So that's how we can, you are able to, we are able to improve the uh, system performance, uh, reducing losses, and it's also improved the stability of the system. It's improved both the angular stability and the voltage stability. It's also prevent the system from failing out of the synchroni synchronization at any disturbance. So that's are the advantages it brings. So it shortened the line. That's that's what we see here. It reduces the reactance of the system. So now we start with the some we start with the some uh, some compensation devices. Now I start with the PCP one, the series capacitor. So here you can see if we have a transmission line, this is our transmission line. In the transmission line we added a series capacitor. So the series capacitor are connected in series with the line to compensate the inductive reactance of the line. So if the inductive reactance of the line, if XL, then the capacitive reactance is XC, then we got the transmission line reactance. 
the x total which come to actually xl minus xc so which is a uh, 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 smaller without uh, uh, without the compensation impedance so this reduces the transfer reactance between the two areas thus they increase the maximum power transfer and reduce the transmission line loss so how it's increased the power transfer you know that p which is b sending p receiving over x sine of delta so if this x reduced then we can increase more power with the same voltage and the same transmission angle so that's how it's improving the power transfer actually and how it's uh, reduced the losses and we see that when we have the the it's also reduced the current magnitude in the previous slide slides we see that this means it's also reducing the losses in the across the transmission line it's current reduced this means it's reducing the losses so there's also another advantage it brings and actually it's also increased the reactive power production since we are adding a capacitor and when current flowing through the capacitor this means it's producing the reactive power this capacitor so that is the another advantage uh, it brings some difficulties when the, we have the series capacitor for example when the, it the, there is a short circuit in somewhere in the transmission line a large current can flow through the capacitor it can destroy this capacitor so that is the one of the we need a sophisticated uh, protection scheme to protect this capacitor here you can see the some of the example how uh, the protection scheme implemented here we have this uh, spare gap we have this bypass relay here so we need to have this is the other protection how the protection implemented to protect this the uh, protect this uh, series capacitor the series capacitor is also bring some uh, synchronous resi resonance sub synchronous resonance some uh, oscillation uh, is actually lower than the fundamental frequency since we, we have this capacitor series capacitor and the network including the transmission line and the generator reactants we have this l so this c and l they have a resonance frequency which is 1 over 2 pi root over l over c so if there is any disturbance anything happen in the system then it introduced this uh, oscillation frequency this subsynchronous resonance in the system so that is the one of the problem it introduced by this series capacitor so how in order to damping damping that it need to install some damping circuit for example here this is the damping so here the first one is the series capacitor is the di connected directly and the later d to uh, instead of uh, directly connected it's also possible to connect this the, through the thyristor so it's, it's called the thyristor Swiss series capacitor. Here you can see these are the several of the thyristor Swiss series capacitor are connected in a transmission line. So in order to have the lower impact of the capacitor, since um, the amount of the capacitor would be different based on the loading condition. So when we have the high loading condition, then we need a more capacitor. When we have the low loading condition and we need the less capacitor, so based on that we can the inject the capacitor and if we don't need that then we can bypass the capacitor through the uh, thyristor bulb so that is the one advantage this thyristor brings to this now we can start with the thyristor control reactor since the the capacitor they can be on and off that uh, if we use only the thyristor in the previous slide and we see that if we we can insert the thyristor inside the capacitor or bypass the capacitor through the thyristor so that 
can we do but we don't have this controllable reactance of this the thyristor uh, of this capacitor so what we do in addition to this capacitor a parallel a tcr has been connected in parallel we know that the thyristor control reactor this tcr the reactance of the tcr is the controllable is based on the firing angle of this thyristor so we can write the reactance of this the tcsc by this equation since they are parallel and here the reactance of this uh, tcs the uh, tcr is controllable so by regulating the firing angle of the thyristor we can regulate this uh, we can regulate this uh, reactance of this thyristor. So when you have the many of those TCSC connected in series in a transmission line, then we have a very wide range of control actually. So when we don't need uh, that much uh, capacitance, then we can minimize the uh, we can minimize the insertion of the capacitive reactance in the transmission line. So when we have the heavy loading condition, then we can insert more react more capacitance. So we got the freedom of how much the capacitance we want to insert in the transmission line through the application of this TCSC. So that is the one advantage of having the controllable capacitor. So what kind of advantage it brings, then we can start with this figure. So we have this. Uh, we already know the, how the, uh, the how the P delta characteristics look like. So this is the characteristic for uncompensated line. We don't use any 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 uh, capacitor here compensation. Then we see we got this one. So now uh, we have this is our acceleration area and we have this is our deacceleration area for uncompensated line we have this uh, for example for this one we have this less deacceleration area this is the total deacceleration area we have but if we used uh, if we used a uh, series compensation using the using the series capacitor then this x actually it's reducing since we see that this is xl minus xc for example this is for the 30 percent compensation we got this blue curve and for the same power transfer we see that we have a very big deacceleration area so we see that we have a very big deacceleration area so this means it's improving the stability of the system And how much the reactance can be increased in in theoretically it can be actually infinity and we can increase to 100% compensation but uh, in practical in practical the series capacitor compensation does not usually exceed uh, 75 to 80% including load balancing and the parallel path high fault current and the possible difficulties for power flow control often the compensation actually is limited to around 30 percent uh, due to this uh, concern so it, it is the 25 to 34 30 percent is the uh, normal compensation that we apply for for series compensation so we see it's the capacitor based compensation now we want to see how we can inject the voltage using the voltage source converter so this is the one example here we use the dynamic voltage resistor where we have this voltage source converter and we can have the similar control principle as the dq the similar one current controller with the external voltage controller so what we have here we have this uh, uh, capacitor and we have also transformer injection transformer and the transformer is connected in series 
and we have all we can have also a uh, energy uh, storage to inject some active power there so it's the similar configuration as the statcom but the statcom connected in parallel but this one is connected in series so its uh, main application is for voltage active filter and also voltage uh, deep mitigation so this is the one the main application of this the uh, uh, dbr so we have reviewed many the effects devices and we see that they have uh, many advantages that bringing for the power system the potential benefits of the effects control include investment cost reduction of uh, transmission system and increase system security reliability stability and it's also increased power system capability power transfer capability and enhance men in quality of the electrical energy delivered to the customer so the quality of the power is improved a lot it it removed all the harmonic introduced by the all non-linear uh, non-linear load with fax controller power carrying capability may be increased up to the values that approach to the line's thermal limit that what we see using uh, uh, series compensation we can increase the power so that it can reach to its thermal limit so that is the maximum limit uh, can transfer by the transmission line and the fax controller they are very fast and able of dynamic directive power control so they can continuously take part in regulation of the voltage at distribution system level reliability and the power quality especially the waveform and the harmonic they can in that can be improved a lot if you use this effect devices so that is the one main advantage we have uh, using using uh, these effect devices this is a side view how it look like and we can see that this is the control center and how the inductor and capacitor they are all here and how they look like so this is a, just an industrial uh, this is a view of the how the effects look like effect devices this the, installed in a substation somewhere in the transmission system it's a industrial SBC the source from Siemens and uh, those are the main application for industrial uh, SPC to remove the harmonic uh, to remove the voltage fluctuation and unbalanced load so rapid change of reactive power so it can eliminate many things for the industrial for industrial load so we want the as much constant voltage as much as possible so this fact devices bring many advantages for the industrial customer and this uh, SBC is the very reliable for this industry. So these are the application of the SBC that uh, we see. Now we want to see also how we can design them. In the next two slides, I will show you two example of designing, for example, two exercise related to SBC now we can now we can start with an example of the exercise of uh, Sean compensation so we have a Sean compensation this is a uh, the figure here you can see is a transmission line system and here the sending in voltage is VS and the receiving is voltage is V here and at the midpoint we use the Sean compensation so we have the transmission line impedance this is the xl by 2 and this is the xl over 2 
and uh, this shunt compensation keeps the voltage is V. Let's say it's an unity one per unit. Now what we need to find for this example exercise, find the expression for the compensator current, active power, and the reactive power. So we need to calculate those, find an expression, or in a real system you would have this, you would know this value, and then based on it you can design. And also check the p delta characteristics. And, and explain how it improve the system stability. So now we have this transmission line. And we have this sending in. And we have the receiving in here. And this is XL over 2. And you have this shunt compensation in the middle of the line, say SPS, here we connect it. And let's say this, the voltage at this point is B. So we need to drive expression for the current, this current, IM. And here, let's say the current is I1M and the current is I2M. And we can assume that. The, this voltage, if you assume this is the reference voltage, and the angle here between these two is the delta. The angle between this sending and, and the receiving in. So here at the midpoint, the angle should be delta over 2. So now how we can calculate the current I1M. We have the Vs, and this is angle, assume it's a zero degree, and he send uh, receiving is delta. So we have the midpoint voltage, which is V, and the angle is delta over 2. And then we have the uh, reactance, which is SL over 2. That's how we can calculate this I1M, and similarly, we can calculate also I2M, which is B delta over 2 minus BR delta and XL over 2. So that gives us this current. And based on that, we can easily calculate the current, which is I. 2m minus i1m. So this is the compensator current. So what about the power? The active power. The active power which usually come from the sending in is a bs i1 M. And now this is not the active power, actually, this is the apparent power. We see you can write S plus, now we see you can write P plus J of Q. So you can calculate this active power from this equation and you will get the active power something like if you assume BS is equals to B which is BR, then you will get 4 XL B square sine of delta over 2. So that's how you will get this active power. Similarly, you can also write the reactive power the sending in reactive power, which is the receiving in, is the minus sending in, which is the minus receiving in, you will get which is 2b square. Actually, in the power, it is 2, not 4. 
to be a square over xl 1 minus cos of delta over 2 and what would be the compensation power the q from the compensation you will get which is pm over im multiplied im which would be 4b square over xl 1 minus cos of delta over 2 so that's how you can calculate this one this is just an example now if we move to our next exercise is uh, related to a uh, uh, series compensation we have a transmission line here the voltage and the phase is given this is for the standing end and the voltage for the receiving end and the transmission line reactants so from this we can find the how much the power it can send this is p b s b r x sine of delta so this power is actually less than 1000 megawatt so we want to insert a capacitor here we want to insert a capacitor that allow us to transfer 100 megawatt power so we need to find what the size of the capacitor what would be the size of the capacitor and the midpoint voltage line current reactive power so we need to calculate all these things here so we have the transmission system and we want to compensate with the series capacitor so this is the system we have Uh, now first we know how much the power we can send without the compensation so we have the vs br and this is the xl sine of delta that give us the value now we want to transmit 1000 megawatt actually this is the 1000 megawatt we want to transmit so bs is known br is known so xl minus xc sine of delta so what is known here this vs vr xl and delta all these things are given and xc is unknown so we need to find it that give us the value of xc so we got the value of xc and now we can calculate the current here what would be the current for the compensation is the line current so we know br we know bs and we know this uh, reactance this xl minus xc so that give us our current and then what would be the midpoint build is which is bs i xl over 2 minus xc over 2 similarly we can also calculate the q so that's how we can calculate the, all this the voltage current all this thing so that's what i have for you in this lecture 
thank you for attending the lecture and if you have any question then you can send me an email or we can also uh, schedule a, a meeting short meeting in skype or or other method